Yes guys, what is up? Homemade Madness, back again, and you're watching part 5 of my quest to build a fully homemade jet ski. So I already made the hull, top half, and a custom jet drive, all using my self-made plans. And in part 4 I tore the engine out of this Kawasaki Superbike. It's a 1200cc 4 cylinder engine, and should make around 180 horsepower. Then I mounted the engine in the hull on engine rubbers, and connected it to the jet drive using a drive shaft and a drive belt. So in this episode I want to hook the engine up to everything it needs to run and then take it for a test drive. And because nothing about this engine was designed for use in a boat, it's actually way more complicated than it sounds. So I'll make a custom exhaust manifold, a water box, an exhaust tip, heat exchanger, another heat exchanger, a water cooling system for the exhaust, change the CV axle setup, make a metal frame to house the wiring, connect the wiring, hook up the cooling system and finally hook up a quick temporary steering system, then put it in the water take it for a test drive and see how it goes. Well, that's a lot of stuff for one video, better get started. So, the exhaust. It might not be as simple as you might expect. This is the original one from the bikes. It went on the cylinders, something like this, and then went under the engine to the rear of the bike. But I don't want it to run that way, I want it to run this way. So I'll make a new manifold from this 40mm tube and these bends. So I'll make the four pipes coming out here, down a bit, and then into one bigger pipe around here. So the header is pretty simple. But now it gets complicated because as you might know a boat or a jet ski normally has a water cooled exhaust and you know it because water is coming out of the exhaust port so the reason why it's cooled by water is just because the exhaust will get really hot really quickly in here so to solve it they simply put water in the exhaust so i'll just put four tubes spraying water into each exhaust pipe to cool it and then the water will go in here and in here i'll make what is called a water box this box will collect the water and also silence the exhaust sound. And then from the water box, which I'll make from this stainless sheet, the water and exhaust gases will flow a bit up above the water line, then come down again and exit the hull here. So first, let's make the new header.
Okay, so the exhaust manifold is done and I connected it to this 60 mm tube out here. And next up is making the water lock. So I'll make four tubes to jet water into here. And then the water will come down here, go into the water box. And the water box or water lock is used just to collect the water and muffle the sound. So it goes in here and there will be a layer of water in the water box. And then it goes up here above the water line and outside on this side. If it doesn't make sense, just keep watching and I hope it will at the end. So that's the exhaust all done. I'm still waiting for the hoses to attach this to this and this to here. And also I still need to add the water inlets here. But I'll do it later because first I'll focus on the cooling. So the cooling plan is this jet has an output over here which I still need to make with pressurized water from the outside. And I could just run it straight through the engine and cool it. But I won't do that because I don't want outside water in this engine because it might damage it and it can't regulate the cooling anymore and it might run too cold. So what I'll do instead is keep the original cooling system of the engine with coolant in it and use the engine's pump to circulate it and then make a heat exchanger from aluminum which will sit around here and the outside water will then flow through the heat exchanger along with the coolant and cool the coolant 
And this way the engine will work just like it did in the motorcycle with its own thermostat, its own coolant pump, only not a radiator but a heat exchanger. Except I also need to cool the engine oil and in the bike there was a small radiator to cool the oil. But what I'll do in a jet ski is make a second heat exchanger for the oil. So then the coolant will flow from this heat exchanger, cool down a bit and then go to the second heat exchanger to cool the oil but not too much and then go back into the engine. So to make the heat exchanger I have this aluminum tube and these tubes and I'll put four of those in here and then make an adapter so the water can go from one outlet into four and then make a hole here and a hole here for the outside water to flow and I'm using aluminum for this because it conducts heat way better than stainless steel. So that's the plan, make one big heat exchanger for the coolant Make a smaller one for the engine oil. Outside water will flow through the coolant, out the exhaust. Coolant will flow from the engine. First heat exchanger, second heat exchanger, cool the oil, and then go back into the engine and cool the engine. That's the plan. Let's make it.
both heat exchangers are in place. It was quite a lot of work to make them. I made this one off camera, but it's just the same as this one, except it's for oil. So I stole these fittings off the bike's oil cooler. And I'll do all the plumbing and stuff later, because I'm still waiting on some parts for that. And I'll also add the fill point at the highest point, so somewhere around here, along with the coolant tank, which will go somewhere around here. And I'll make a separate frame to house all this stuff coming from here to here. And then this metal frame can also house all the electronics needed for the ignition and stuff like that. So that's all for later. First I want to finish the exhaust by adding the water jet inlets in here. So I'll make this stainless tube going somewhere around here with four small tubes connecting it to each pipe. So yeah, let's make this first and then hook up the plumbing. And then I want to change this drive shaft angle a little bit by raising this up a little bit. And then once that's done, we'll wire up the engine with the electronics, put oil and coolant in it, and see if it runs. Okay, so last shot you saw me put on the wiring harness. 
Now I've been going at it with a pair of pliers and cutting off everything I don't need, which is all right here. Mainly lights, dashboard, and stuff I just don't need to run the engine. So the wiring harness is now much simpler, and I've hooked it all up to the coils, to the ignition switch, battery, and then I quickly hooked up a gas tank. And that means, well, it's basically ready to run. So I'm not sure what it's gonna do, I hope it runs. There's no exhaust gasket in there, so it will make a lot of noise. And obviously it doesn't have an air filter on, so it won't run very good. And I can't run it very long because there's no cooling at the moment. I did fill it with oil, pretty important. And I connected up this oil cooler, which is also not working at the moment. But it should be fine for just a minute. So let's push the button and see what happens. Well, that runs. Doesn't run perfectly at the moment yet, but I'm pretty sure it will be fixed with the exhaust properly fitting and an air filter and maybe a carb clean. So next up, I'll clean it all up a little bit and then plumb in some cooling lines. So we have engine cooling and exhaust cooling. Hook up a garden hose to the cooling system and then run it for a bit longer. Okay, so here we are again, a few weeks later, I've been busy with work and I've been on holiday. And as you can see, I've also painted everything. So I took everything apart, painted the hull, and then painted all the metal framing in here. Then put everything back together, connected all the hoses, and it's pretty much ready for a test drive. And I've also added this tube, which is the water pickup from the jet drive to cool the heat exchanger. And this is a bilge pump just in case any water does get in and this tube is the excess water which doesn't go into the exhaust and comes out of here so you can see whether it's cooling or not and just for the test drive I've added this quick steering which connects to this cable which connects to the jet drive so I can steer it and this is my throttle and this is my kill switch, stuff like that. So the plan is I can sit here and take it for a quick test drive. Not too fast, just first or second gear. See if it floats, see if it keeps cool. 
And to get it in the water I made a little trailer because it's getting quite heavy now to lift. And I've also made a simple boat ramp which you can see in the water to get it in the water. I hope it works. And I've got a temperature gauge here to check the engine temperature. And if it keeps cool and keeps running good, well, we'll take it for a test drive. Okay, so that's it for this video guys, uh, thanks for watching, it worked pretty good, no leaks, temperature nice and perfect, um, the belt did skip teeth as I was trying to go any faster, so I think I'll upgrade the belt system, but for the rest of it, it works pretty good, it's nice and stable in the water, so this was only in third gear, so I'm really anxious to see what it can do in fifth or sixth gear, but I'll do it later, uh, next video. So mount the top half, make the seat, mount the steering, paint it and then it's finished. So thanks for watching, see you then.